We're so excited to be with you again tonight here live at x Families. And you mm -hmm. guys get excited because I have a wonderful guest for you tonight, um, the amazing Clinton McCoy, you guys, all right? All the way from Jacksonville, Florida, my hometown. So I'm so excited to be bringing him to you. I read his bio and I looked him up on Facebook. I said, you know what? This man is a man of wisdom. I love what he was putting out in the universe. I said, you know, we need to bring him to Excellent Families to teach us about health. You know, one of our pillars here in Excellent Families, you guys, is, is health. We love to teach them. We want to be intentional about living a healthy lifestyle. So if you don't know me, this is your first time ever seeing me. My name is Natasha Perez, and I am a wife, a mother, a lover of his presence, and your servant CEO here in Excellent Families. And I am so happy tonight to bring you this content, and I hope and pray that it adds value to your family. So we're going to get right into, um, into um, introducing Clinton. I'm going to let him just share a little bit about himself and share um, a little bit about his family. Hmm. Well, hey, how you doing? Thanks for having me on. You, I see you uh, used a couple words, uh, awesome and, and wisdom to describe me. I'm, I'm pretty sure some other people might <laughs> have some other uh, choice words, but that's on them and in the happy form. But thank you for that uh, kind introduction. You got me kind of blushing I, <laughs> a little bit. But um, yeah, um, my name is um, Clinton M. McCoy. Um, no, I just, you know, I have a, an awesome family, you know, kids, girlfriend, um, even people that's not really a part of my blood family that really shows me a awesome, a lot of support that if I uh, kind of, without those behind the scenes people, a lot of the things that I'm capable of doing would not be happening right now. So I'm very appreciative of the people that I, that I call my family. That is so awesome. That is so awesome. Okay, so now the first question I have for you, I want you to talk to us about your book, about in, in, um, Clint's an author. He didn't mention that. He's being a little humble tonight, but he's an author and he wrote this amazing book. It's called The Reverse Effect. So Clint, just share with us tonight, what is The Reverse Effect? Well, the fact is uh, my system on helping people actually being able to change their direction or if your life is going in a direction that you don't want it to go in, the reverse effect is what you get when you apply these seven life changes I actually wrote about inside my book. And it's not so much just even your life, it's even if you're trying to achieve a certain goal and things are not working out the way that you want it, what can you actually do nuts and bolts step? Lost signal for a little bit. You're fine. You're good. Okay. Am I back? Yeah. All right. Um, so it's just a, a system based on what I call the four quadrants of well-being to help you change your direction. And of course, that's uh, what I you know, wrote inside my book, The Reverse Effect of Seven Life Changing Principles. And that's what it is. It's the, ref the effect that you receive when everything has changed to go in the direction that you wanted to go in. And it's awesome. Can you share with us the four quadrants? Okay. The reverse effect is based on the seven life-changing principles that I, I believe that comes when you can balance what I call the four quadrants of well-being. Um, that first quadrant for me is, first is personal development, which I think is first in any major change, any big goal achievement um, starts on a personal development level because it's about us. And then uh, relationship development. Um, so quadrant one is personal development. Quadrant two is relationship development. And not so much just boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, which that's important too, but really being able to identify the people around you that either uh, help you, can help you achieve the goal that you want to achieve or inhibit you from actually achieving that, the toxic people and how to remove them from. And then there's the goal achievement component because we can want to do a lot of things have a lot of great ideas but if we don't have an effective methodology on how to achieve that goal and maintain it we're often going to either fall find ourselves falling short or getting the goal but losing it relatively quickly and then of course hardly any of that matters if we don't have health and wellness That's right. you can be the smartest you can be the um best goal, best laid out plan, best relationships around you. But if you can't get out of the doctor's bed, 
or if you got to take, you know, 13 medicines, you know, every morning, you know, you're probably not going to, it's probably going to uh, inhibit your uh, growth process and achieving your goals. So that's what I try to do is I try to help people to uh, develop a, not just a balance between the four quadrants, but strengths inside of them. So you're strong in personal development, strong in goal achievement, strong in identifying your relationships, and mentally and physically you are strong. And that's the four quadrants of well-being. That is awesome. I love that because, you know, a lot of times when we are trying to lose weight, we never emphasize on the, the personal development part. So when I first talked to you and you said personal development, I was like, wow, you know, I never heard that before. Usually when we, are, we go on a, a weight loss journey, we just... We don't even think about the mindset. We don't think about how we need to feed our mind. Like it literally starts from the mind so that we have to even prepare our mind to even go on that journey. But the fact that you in, in, um, incorporated that in your program is absolutely phenomenal. So the next question I have for you kind of go in lines with the second question is what are some of the myths and the truths about, you know, weight loss that you've heard and that you've dealt with with some of your clients? Well, what I've learned over the years is, I mean, there's a lot of myths out there from um, nutrition, mm -hmm. to exercises, to the type of exercises that you can do, to the amount of time that you need to exercise, um, and what you can get away with. Um, a myth, uh, what a lot of people don't know is that uh, exercise in of itself as an independent variable does not make you lose weight. Mm. So a lot of people think that uh, going to the gym uh, two times a week. First of all, they think that they go to the gym or get a trainer twice a week, and that's all they do. That they should lose weight, which is uh, it's just not true because that also comes to diet. Um, a lot of myths is a lot of people where they think they have to get their protein from um, dairy, um, meat, um, just just a lot of things. Uh, waste. I mean. Not, I don't want anybody that does these different types of things, but, but it's a mess that I'm not going to say that a waste, that's it. So it might have for a little while, but it, it didn't burn any fat. Um, a lot of myths that people act like they don't care about how they look. Um, that's a myth as most of us will pretty much know, especially when nobody's around. Um, just... There's just a lot of things that I've learned uh, when it comes to it um, that you think that lifting light weights and high reps are going to help you get toned. Um, a lot of people think uh, carbs are the enemy mm. when that actually out of the three micro macronutrients is the one that we need the most. A lot of people think uh, like a detox. They think a detox actually helps them burn fat. What's detox doesn't burn fat. That's not the purpose of detoxing. Um, a lot of people think uh, a lot of pills is actually as healthy for them. There's no real, the, the science is definitely pointing towards use of vitamins and supplements are not really effective mm -hmm. for overall health and wellness. I mean, there's just a lot of them that we can actually go through, but really to address first is um, one that thinking that skinny means healthy. Okay. Um, thinking that, um, which is not true. Um, and overweight doesn't mean unhealthy. Mm, uh, uh, and losing weight doesn't exactly make you healthy. Because there's a lot of things you can do to make you lose weight, but it will not make you healthier. Mm. Um, there's, there's just, I mean, I could go on and on and on with it. Just uh, one thing is a myth that, uh, that you're going to get the best results by somebody telling you everything you need to do without doing any research on your own. Oh, wow. um, because if you don't develop your why, you're rarely going to achieve your goal. Um, so there's just a, a couple right there. That's good. Let's talk a little bit before we get to the truth. Let's talk a little bit about one of the myths that you said, because when we talked and I was interviewing you for this interview, you shared about protein. <laughs> okay. And I think that's a huge myth for a lot of us. So talk to me a little bit in detail about protein and, and almond milk in particular, because you kind of broke my heart a little bit and I actually went and did my own little research. <laughs> so talk to us a little bit about protein and um, some of the proteins, um, things that we use. Like the almond milk and coconut milk. So I just, because you didn't mention this to me. So when you went and did your own research, like I said, and looked on the back of the carton, 
What did you say? Just like you said, not much, not much. Nothing. Not much substance <laughs> in the almond milk, just like you said. Or the coconut milk. Now, it's different if you drink the coconut milk straight out the coconut. Right. But once it comes inside the thing, it's not. Um, and a lot of people, there's a misconception, first of all, that people over protein. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time, if you put too, if you get too much protein and you don't use it effectively, it's going to turn into fat. The same thing with carbs, the same thing as with fat. Um, a lot of people overemphasize the importance of protein that they think that they have to get from milk or dairy. Mm -hmm. um, when protein is protein, if you get protein from meat or from dairy, it's still protein, except there's a lot of studies towards the meat-based protein, if it's dominant inside your diet, links to cancers, mm -hmm. heart disease, um, diabetes, blood pressures, because of the other things that actually come surrounding with it. But when I was when I was talking to you and you was like, well, what about if you get protein from almond milk? There's nothing there, really. It, it, it makes us think that we're getting a milk substitute because we've been so conditioned that we need milk and dairy. Right. When for a lot of us, especially as uh, ethnic people, they're lactose intolerant. Mm -hmm. So why are we designed to need something that we can't have? Mm. Uh, if we believe that our bodies have been designed by God and that it's, you know, uh, that the things that we need, we're able to get and we are, we won't reject it in mass. Right. So we're really not supposed to have that. I, I tell a lot of people that, um, people think that if, well, well, how are you going to get your protein if you don't get it from the milk? Well, you get it from the plants. How are you going to get your calcium? You get it from plants the earth pretty much provides a lot of what we have. And of course, what I was telling between you is I don't eat, I don't eat solid meats. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't eat chicken. I don't eat fish. I don't eat eggs. Um, of course, pork and, and stuff like that. Um, and I don't use the milk from it. And some people would think that I don't, I don't have, lack muscle tissue. Right. You know, I don't lack tone and I don't lack bone density or nail density. So there's a lot of myths inside those different things. And I'm not telling anybody don't eat meat. Right. Um, I'm just saying that that doesn't have to be your main source of protein. That's a myth. It's just, it's not true. It's marketed to us by an industry that, uh, say, say when people eat a, a lower amount of meat, you don't see a lot of people with high blood pressure, right. um, heart disease or cholesterol or even the diabetes, but we've been so conditioned to eat a certain way that doesn't align with our health that that's what we do just the same thing like you asked me what is my regimen right. so what do i have for breakfast lunch dinner and stuff like that right. i don't even eat on that schedule right. because 50 60 years ago that really wasn't a schedule what they had for breakfast was whatever the first thing that they ate in the morning because first of all you wasn't even guaranteed that especially a hundred years ago or even in a lot of places right now they don't even eat on that schedule so we're taught these and we end up overeating. And I mean, just look at us, especially uh, in the African-American community. Okay. Look at us over 30. You know, if there's 50 of us in a crowd, what does 35 of us look like? You know, so, so yeah, that's it. So when I said about the, the, the protein, Try to give a short answer about it, but you want to try to be convincing with people to be like, because I tell you like this, don't believe me. Go check yourself. Right. You know, but we don't need those milk derivatives or anything like that. If you want to eat cereal, eat it regular. You know, mix it with some nuts. You know, mix it with some raisins, some cranberries, some apples or bananas on the side or something like that and, and see what it does for your body and see how you actually feel. So, Definitely. You no, know, it's a myth. Oh, one more thing too. Say women, mm -hmm. you probably can digest about 15 grams of protein per meal. So, and uh, you probably only need about, about making about 15%, 20 at the most of your protein intake a day. Because anything over that, you're not digesting and it becomes waste and it stores as fat. So. Okay. So, Clinton, tell me now, let, let's just be real, okay? Because I want to speak for some people on here that love meat, like me. Now, I have, throughout the years, cut back. I eat a little bit of meat 
not much. And I went through a season where I just cut out chicken a little bit, you know, um, well, completely out of my mm-hmm. diet. Tell me a little bit, okay, what meat can we eat? Like, if, we, if you had to give us one, can you just give us one, all right? <laughs> give us one well, I'll, that we can eat. <laughs> Share with us. I'll do better than that. Okay. You can eat all meat. Okay. Just not to the degree that we eat it to. Okay. When I used to eat steak, if it wasn't... Yeah, if it was on a 12 or a 16 ounce steak, it was sacrilegious to me. Okay. You know, I, I felt like we needed to see the rabbi or the or the, or the priest or priestess or, okay. you know, the, the prophetess or somebody like that. Yeah. Because, hey, there was no meat on my tray. I'm not telling people that you don't have to eat the steak. You can eat the steak because we're omnivores. Um, our digestive system is set up to be able to do that. Okay. But not the 12 ounce. Okay. So instead of us having a big chicken breast, an eight, nine, 10 ounce chicken breast, let's cut it back to when we weigh it, six ounces. So when it's cooked, it comes out to be about four and a half, five. And then we put some legumes on our, on our plate, some grains, okay. um, another colorful vegetable, and eat that, and then see what happens. So I'm not telling people don't eat meat. And then if you want to do it, you want to kind of be leaner with it. Okay. I mean, this only matters for people that want to have lower cholesterol, um, lower their rates of their rates of heart disease, um, lower their body fat. That's why when a lot of people end up detoxing, one of the reasons they drop six or seven pounds or 10 pounds in 12 or 13, 14, 15 days. If nobody cares about those things, by all means, eat all the meat that you want. Okay. So that's all I tell people. But even in our fish, fish is good, but we want to be careful about the mercury. So that means, well, fish is better than pork. So we eat a lot more fish. It's still too much of the the negative um, uh, the negative stuff that's inside of it right. that can cause the carcinogenics, the mercury and stuff and like that. So yeah, I, I don't, I'm not telling people don't eat meat, and I don't tell people don't eat meat because what I told you is I'm not a vegetarian, I'm not a vegan, I'm not anything. Um, I'm not black. I'm not a a, a, a life coach. I'm not a personal trainer. I'm Clinton McNeil McCoy, and I do the things necessary to align with my goal. If I want to eat meat next week on a plate, that's what I'll do. Okay. Okay. You know, I'll eat meat. All right. Um, Amanda Jones asked that. I think you kind of answered it. She said, so why don't you eat meat or eggs? Why don't I? Yes. Well, at at 44, uh, you start, I'm starting thinking more about my mortality. Mm-hmm. the goals that I want to achieve. One of my big goals is I want to live to be a healthy, vibrant, independent 90 plus. All right. Um, and I believe that what I put inside my mouth is one of the biggest things that can hinder that on my part. It doesn't mean that I won't kill over and die tomorrow. Right. You know, but what okay. it won't be is because of my lack of effort. Okay. Um, as I'm getting older, I want to be able to tell people I'm 44, I'm 45, and I want somebody to be like, wow. Yes. I'm when I, yeah, you know, when I, I want, I want everything to be working the way that I want it, when I need it to be working. Right. Um, I want to remain marketable. So if, if my girlfriend decides she's done with my crap one day, <laughs> you know, just, you know, I, I want to be able to get out and move and think and contribute and, I want to leave a legacy. That's right. So I have to, I believe that I have to do things that align with that. And if I think it's about making money, it's going to be more than, don't get me wrong, I want to make that money. Yes. <laughs> but if I think that that's going to affect that more than my health and wellness, yeah, I'm fooling myself. I love the mindset. It, I love the mindset. Yeah. And, I've, and I've read, and I've read like books like, um, uh, the alkaline herbal medicine, um, opening to the spirit, um, healing medicine and, and chakras. Let me see what else over here. The, uh, 10 day smoothie cleanse, um, a book called the China study, Dave Campbell's, uh, a book called whole. There's, there's just tons of studies that points to our Western diet. Mm-hmm. Um, we have like the highest colon cancers, heart diseases, and stuff like that. So when you know more and don't do better, mm. it's one fool. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. So. That is so good, Clint. Okay, so we talked yeah. about the myths. Now share with us some truths 
Okay, share with us some truths that we can, you know, take and implement. Okay, first, um, sleep Woo. is number one before weight loss. Did you guys hear Stress? that? Whoops. Yeah. Stress is number two. Your eating is number three, then exercising. Wow. Um, Can we talk a little so bit? So those are the... Can you talk about sleep a little bit, Clinton? Tell them how many hours of sleep they should be getting every night and then go into stress as well. If you can just talk real quick about those two. I think that'll bring a lot of clarity. You need to average it average six that means sometimes it should be eight hours maybe every now and again between pressure or something like that we might get four or five but it need to be six seven eight hours uh really eight hours because you want your body to go through the different levels of sleep mm -hmm. because in those different sleep phases um round sleep beta uh, stuff like that is um as when our body is putting out certain hormones that allows it to correct itself Mm -hmm. Also to deal with stress. Any of us that's ever dealt with depression before mm -hmm. or um, anxiety knows what stress can do. Stress will put out certain hormones. One, um, hormones that's going to make you fatter or way more, more water weight, um, drain your willpower. So sleep helps your body regulate itself. Okay. Helps your body heal. That's when you're going to put out your most human growth hormone. Good. That's going to, uh, what they call the anti-aging hormone. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to, you know, help your body get rid of different toxins and wastes and stuff. So sleep is important. Um, it's just major, you yes. know, even with helping you deal with it, recharges your batteries to put it in an easy term. So that's why that's important. Very important. Yes. A lot of people, if you're working out, trying to change up the way you eat, but you're sleeping for hours and you're wondering why, yes, you might be losing weight or changing your shape, but it's slower yes. and it takes you more effort. Right. Because we gotta we gotta get more sleep, and that of course comes from stress. And a lot of times, the things that keep us up is we worry about two of the most wrong things: things we cannot do anything about, and things that we're not willing to put in the effort to do something about. Good. If we eliminate those two things, we'll start to find out that we're able to get more sleep. You're preaching personal development stuff, guys. You better throw some hearts up on this screen because this man is giving you guys some mad content. Okay. And I will tell you, this, that is one of, I know this to be true because this is one of my secrets for looking, for looking like this at 41, okay? Because I get sleep. I love sleep. Like, our family is known <laughs> to love, we love to sleep. Right. And it really works, you know? So if you're not getting that seven hours in, at least seven hours, you need to be doing that. Huge. I'm so glad you, talk, you, um, you touched on that tonight. All right, Clint, so let's go into... Mm -hmm. Because we have a lot of ladies on here tonight. So Tara's on here, all right? Uh -huh. Pastor D's on here, Amanda Jones, Sierra Marla. Okay, so talk to the ladies tonight. So what are some of the hurdles and obstacles that women face as they try to go on this journey of trying to lose weight? Well, first one is they uh, it's personal development. They put They think it's the activities that are more important than the personal development. Um, their goal achievement, the way that they set their goals to, uh, to want to read it, reach it, the methodology that they use is faulty. So they rarely get it in their why. Mm. Nine times out of 10, the reason that most don't achieve any goal, much less fitness goal, is their why is not important enough. Wow. Um, I usually tell my clients that work out, that work, that train with me, if when we start, first of all, Weight loss is no longer your first goal, unless it's worked before. So if having weight loss is your number one goal, it's worked before, keep it. But if not, let's change up. So we got to start making one consistency our first goal. Um, and then our nutrition. But a, a, lot of, a lot of, not just women, people fall off because they set their goals wrong. And, they try, and first of all, they start believing Instagram and uh, these uh, uh, Facebook posts and things that they see where this person went from 35, 40% body fat to almost like Serena Williams in 90 days. Mm. Um, I'm not going to say impossible because then somebody will find somebody in Indochina <laughs> 200 years ago that did it and say, you said it was impossible. 
but it is highly unlikely. A, a lot of people they don't set the goals realistic and they set them backwards. They don't they don't set them um, effectively. That is so good. That is so good. Um, anything else? Anything else that we can help out the ladies tonight? A lot of people are not. They listen to people. Uh, what's one of a post I put up? Uh, a lot of people take constructive criticism from people that's never constructed anything. You'll have people tell you stuff. Oh, you don't need a trainer. Just go to the gym. But look at them. Or you don't need to lose weight. Or all you have to do is this. And I've seen this anecdotal evidence over here of somebody that just did. You have to be willing to put in the work. You have to be willing to give yourself 90 days. Um, a myth that if you think that even if you go to a trainer twice a week and you don't do anything on your own, highly unlikely. Wow. If you work out five days a week, busting your butt and hit up the McDonald's for the sweet tea, highly unlikely. Um, Cause nutrition plays hand in hand, even inside. I have a, um, my nutrition guide here and it's, you know, it's, you probably can't, I don't know how clear you can see it on it. It's pretty, you know, step-by-step -step thick. People think that um, a lot of times also, uh, People look for a lot of something from nothing. Wow. They're not willing to invest in what it takes to bear to make it happen. Um, so from there, so. That is so good. You guys, hang on to the end because I'm going to give you a way to get to Clinton. Because I know you guys are like, and the ones are, mm -hmm. that are in Jacksonville, Florida, I see you on here. Okay, Clinton is in Jacksonville. So hang on to the end. I'm going to give you guys a way to get to him. Okay, so Clinton, tell us now. We have listened to what you said, okay? We're doing the person development. We're getting our sleep, all right? We are on our way to losing this weight. Now, what are the habits that we need to keep doing? You know, because it's easy. I'm not gonna say it's easy, but anybody can lose the weight, right? But the hard part that I ah. find that a lot of people can't do is to keep the weight off. So what are the habits that we need to form to make sure that once we lose the weight, we keep the weight off? One of the things, even when I do like my online coaching, I don't know if I'm am I frozen, or even when I'm dealing, when I'm when I'm training someone, I really try to help them to use your resources, whether it's me or something like that, and then people won't because. And I'm glad you mentioned that because we actually talked about that. A lot of people can't lose weight because they don't change their habits. Mm. They want to they crash diet or jump into a weight loss program, but they don't change their basic habits. And they don't, first of all, even understand the nature of habits and how they're formed. One of the things I like to say, I think I got it from uh, it was John C. Maxwell back there. He says, uh, the, chains, the chains of habits are often too weak to be felt until they're too strong to be broken. Wow. And a lot of people, they don't address their habits first. First thing they want to do is get on the scale, think I'm going to hit the treadmill, elliptical, gym, walk the bridges, walking, um, eat a bunch of salads, which that is definitely not what I do. As a person that do not eat meat, you'll be surprised of the variety that you can actually have. And they wonder why they don't keep the weight off because they didn't start addre addressing it from a habit perspective. You know, okay, I'm used to getting up at this, going to sleep at this time, getting up at this time. We got to start changing that. How do we do that? Not thinking that I'm going to go from getting five hours of sleep to, to eight and a half in one walk. Right. You know, or I'm going to stop. I'm going to be staying up till 11. Now I'm going to start going to bed at nine. You got to learn to start walking that back. How do I change the way do I eat? You don't change everything. In order to really effectively change up the way that you eat, you should be giving yourself 60 to 90 days. Wow. A myth that a habit forms in 21 days. I don't think that there are many peer-reviewed scientific studies that proves that. That's just not true. Um, unless it's a crash, something uh, epic that happens inside your life that just changes everything at one time. It normally takes a minimum of 66 days to a lifetime to change habits. But average 66 days to, uh, I think they say 378 days. People don't think of it this way. So they can't keep it off. Um, so instead of making weight loss your goal, uh, I have to repeat this. You have to think about changing my habits. You know, you keep weight loss as your overall goal, right. but the habit. One thing that happened to me today is I got, I won 
tubercal Steve Harvey thing. Yes, um, congratulations. And, and, I, and I say that to say is that I started this two years ago. Wow. Creating the habits that will align to the opportunity to get noticed. Right. My Facebook page, all my stuff as I learned what's his, what's his target audience? What's Oprah's target audience? Yeah. Craft my message to be effective to that. And if I sat there and I looked at every time, man, they, they haven't contacted me. There's, there's no opportunity. This opportunity wouldn't be here. That's right. Um, the same thing with a weight loss goal. I tell people to look at if you're looking to lose, people don't want to hear this, 50, 60, 70, 80 pounds, and you're not giving yourself a year, I'll just ask them, have they done it before? Right. And if they have, have they kept it off? You know, but another thing, real quick, there's them between pounds and fat loss. Mm. Because you can just lose weight and they're gonna be, you're gonna be skinny fat. Mm -hmm. So if you focus on another myth, oh, I should just lose the weight first and then tone up. Mm -hmm. you, as you know, is, look at you, you have, you've had, this lady didn't tell y'all that she's had six children. <laughs> Check out her pictures on her thing and see her six pack. I got a four and a half pack. <laughs> so, and she got a six and have to have them six children you're going you're going to tell them they're not going to get that from doing just crunches oh, no. or butt lifts nope. or leg lifts without any weights um and that takes time and it takes kitchen work that's right so i mean there's a lot of things i guess i can wrap that whole mama cycle babble bs but she don't say bs um you have to start at your habits and if you don't know where to start, you have to be willing to help invest in someone. If you can't afford someone, before I could afford um, coaches and stuff, I had to do these things. That's right. You know, I spent, um, go on Amazon and find that book for two cents, you know, and that might be $20 and have it sent. That's right. Or you got to be willing to invest. That's right. To learn what you have to do and learn the correct things, not the how you can lose 20 inches in 30 days. That's right. What they say, if it sounds too good to be true. It is. <laughs> yeah. So. That is. Awesome. That. Guys, I want you guys to stay at the end because, you know, I'm going to blow your mind at the end with something about Clint that I found out at the end of the conversation as I was talking with him. So you hold on to the end. OK, so this is um, and if you have any questions for Clint, this is the time right now to put them in the comments. OK, and I'll be at I don't know if he's. Did you share it inside my group? I don't see the I don't see the live in my group. Alexis Paris about to share it right now. What's the group? Is what's the name of your group, Clinton? Um, Total Health and Wellness. You're in the group, so only you can share it to the group. I think. Here, yeah, take my phone, Lex. Just in case, if somebody might have came on and they want to ask a late question or something like Absolutely. that, because okay. And if you're not part of Clinton's group, definitely you heard the name of it. Um, be become a part of that. You know, okay. it's a thing. yeah. Yeah, health and fitness. And your group also, because I'll be, hopefully, you'll be having me back again. So this is really a lot of stuff I'm trying to give people in a short amount of time, and maybe we can get to the breaking it down, you know, you know, even a little better. Yes, definitely. Okay, so here we are. This is um, close into, like, the last few questions that we have for you. What are the tips that you can, that we can implement, you know, like, immediately after we come off this live, okay, what are some of the tips that they can start doing like tonight, tomorrow morning when they wake up to start showing some, um, some results in their health? Well, I don't know about tomorrow morning, but by the end of tomorrow, one of the things that they can immediately do right now is get a food scale. Woo. Wow. You got to start knowing your calories. If you are trying to lose weight and you don't know the, how many calories you take in in a day, you're spinning your will. Wow. Wasting your, your, I don't, your waste. No, it's a waste of time. Wow. You got to start weighing your foods and figuring out about what it is that we put inside our mouths. We're so concerned about external things that don't have much to do with our well being. We don't even really think about what we put inside of our mouth. Wow. That's one of the first things people have to start doing and cutting down the sugary drinks. Ooh. That's fruit juices. Yes. That's Gatorades, yes. that's soda. I didn't say stop because I tell people we're not, and I didn't tell anybody to even stop what they eat. I only just said start weighing it and knowing it. Yes. 
And then you see if that starts to align with your goals. Because of course the studies show that the more, the more awareness, if you if you look at Eric Tolley, the power of now, the awareness thinking, the more aware you actually become of something, the more you start to become the master of your circumstances, which is chapter one inside my book, become the master of your circumstances yeah. and how to do it. But um yeah, that's the, the main thing that you can do is right from the beginning, get a food scale, start monitoring what you put inside your mouth. That is awesome. Okay, give me two more. Give me two more. That's one. Uh, this is a little more difficult for people, but even a habit diary. Okay. A lot of this stuff is the writing down of stuff. I'm even talking about the exercising and stuff like that. Right. Because you want to start to, because you want to build a strong foundation of change. That's right. Because if you don't know why, you know, that's one of the reasons I think rarely does God just deliver you from one thing to another. It usually has you to go on the journey so that you understand the why. So one that you know for yourself and you can tell somebody else. Right. So understanding, you know what, when I get ready to eat this donut, this cake, smoke this cigarette, mm -hmm. um, drink this soda that I know doesn't align with my goal, why, why am I doing that? And then go ahead and drink it if you feel like it. Because you start to address how you're feeling and thinking about something before you do it. Because a lot of us are emotional eaters. And I tell people I have sweet teeth. Right. You know, um, I, I, that's why I, don't, I just don't keep it in. And another thing is don't keep the stuff inside your house. That's right. Don't Tip three right there. Biggest thing, keep the junk food at the store. Right. So if you want something that bad, 11 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night, you have to get up and go to the store to get it. Right. Or bring one home. Because right. I know me, if I don't feel like cooking and there's nothing cooked and everybody's gone, it's easy for me to jump up and um, uh, grab something easy. Right. But yeah, those uh, start addressing your habits. And that's the first thing. And fourth tip, start your exercise program slow. Mm, that's good. Because it's about your nervous system. And that's a whole nother thing to be able to get in. Which, of course, I talk about it inside my guide. Why, God, why most people fail? Mm. Because they don't understand that um, it's not your musculoskeletal system that creates the change in your body. It's a reflection of the change. So our muscles, our flat abs, our health, our energy, that's a reflection of what we put in and what we do. It first requires a neurological stimulant Mm -hmm. to put out a hormonal response mm. so that we can get the results that we want. Like I was telling you, look, if you, the body don't put out any, if you don't put out any, uh, dopamine, no endorphins, no dopamine, no serotonin and win a million dollars, you'll be just like this. Wow. But if you're flowing with dopamine and serotonin and everything like that, you could win a hut and people will be surprised. Why are you so happy? The same thing when people's THC or something, it puts out those, uh, that, that dopamine blasted in and then people just laughing off of nothingness. Right. Because it's about the hormones. That might be a lot. It's good. But like we say, if you, you don't, you got to stretch your mindset. Because right. once we stretch our mindset, it never goes back. That's you got right. to get people out there to start looking. So those are the top five things that I would be able to say. You know, you got to get a food scale, address your habits, stop the sugary drinks and stuff like that and start to learn how to understand what is actually creating the changes inside your body and start slow oh. your first month you should just be getting ready to work out weigh yourself every week so you can monitor yourself right. but not for results not like i feel bad right. because that cortisol that same negative hormone what i was telling you one time go to sleep mad weigh yourself before you go to sleep mm -hmm. mad and upset pressure, depressed, and wake up in the morning, you're probably going to weigh three to four more pounds. Wow. Because cortisol retains water weight wow. and stuff like that. So you're going to wonder, man, why did I gain that weight? And then guess what happens? You feel more like crap. That's right. That's right. So. That's so good. Okay, so we have two questions here before we, before we end up. Um, so Dwight says, what about water intake? It's, I, I believe that's a myth. Nobody should have to drink a gallon of water a day. You know why it's that hard? Because you don't have to drink a gallon of water a day. And all our liquids doesn't have to come from water. If you start getting more liquids from carrots, your vegetables, cucumbers, um, tomatoes, apples, oranges, bananas, 
those things have liquids and it's more than water because water is vital, but it doesn't have vitamin C. You know, it doesn't have vitamin A. You know, it lacks a lot of electrolytes inside of it that you're going to be able to get from bananas or plantains or something like that. Right. Um, so, so it's not about that. It really, if you cut out the sodas and you drink, you like they say, eight good glasses of water a day plus you some fruits or things with liquid inside of it that's going to help your body actually flush, you will be fine. I, I tell people, I don't do... I don't recommend anything that's specifically for weight loss that you should normally do. You should not drink water to lose weight. You should drink water just to have the amount of the right amount of water that your body needs to function. All right. Um, and if you do that, then you will lose the weight. Because if we're doing water, just like um, you can do a lot of things to lose weight. Like you can do the Atkins diet. A bunch of meat will make you lose weight. But it also have adverse effects like the heart disease, cholesterols, and everything like that. So no, I, I tell people, unless you're working outside and you require that amount of water, you don't need that much. Uh, eight glasses, or you drink until you're straight. You know, drink drink enough water that your urine is clear or translucent, and you'll be okay. Wow, that's good. You know? I like because people it. are told those things a lot. I don't walk around drinking a gallon of water. And trust me, look at. I have a before and after pictures uh, album on side of my Facebook. The first picture is me. You know, so even though I've been in the fitness for 25 years, I've also lived life. Right. So I'm 190 pounds now. I've been 138 pounds mount, under mounted chairs when I was in the street. I've also been 215 pounds with the big belly and the moves and stuff like that. So life happens it's not oh you've got good genes but let me tell you something bad habits will crush genes straight up any day you can't outperform bad habits you know but so good. but yeah so that's that's it um no you don't have to drink that much water man just that's it's not necessary replace it with food and get the right nutrients and things that's going to help your body detoxify help your liver and then see what happens with everything not just weight loss that you know? is so good clinton you have freed me all right, so the, the, the <laughs> white asked, what about um, eat less, no, eat, what did he say? What do we find it? Eat less and train more. What about that? Eat less, train more. And that's where we get to, we talk about uh, faulty methodologies. Eat less of what? Do we eat less or do we get uh, less micronutrients? Mm. The correct thing is that Lower in your caloric expenditure, but not to an unhealthy level. So if you expend more calories than you burn today, you know, if you intake less calories than you burn, then you will lose weight. But if you lower your calories at the expense of nutrients, vital nutrients, amino acids, um, your vitamins, A, B, C, K, um, D from sun or in some plants, um, C, um, different enzymes, uh, magnesiums, manganese, uh, potassiums, uh, zincs and irons and nickels and things like that. Yes, you might lose weight, but you're going to start using other, other function. Wow. Things that's going to also lower your blood sugar level. Your, your willpower is directly is tied into your blood sugar level. The lower your blood sugar levels, um, the lower your willpower. That's why sometimes they tell you just eat a Snickers yeah. and it'll pep you up and you'll get the willpower to keep going forward because it skyrockets your blood sugar level. But it's also negative sugar. Mm. Um, so, no, what you want to do is, first of all, how do we know what we're eating less if we don't know how many calories we're taking? If we don't know what our, what they call is your basal metabolic rate. Now, that's different than your, meta, your metabolism. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people think, oh, your, my metabolism is slow. Your metabolism, a small portion of that is with your weight and how many calories you burn. That's your basal metabolic rate, how much calories you burn while at rest. Your metabolism does a bunch more function, like regulate your hormones, mm. you know, regulate your health with your nervous system. So a lot of people be throwing out terms right. that they really don't have an understanding of. And I've done this. Right. You know, I used to think, man, if you train hard all day, you can eat whatever you want. 
as long as you work it off, first of all, you burn less calories than you think when you're actually working out. Mm -hmm. But if you burn 5,000 calories a day and eat 5,500 in a week to the math, you should gain two pounds. Wow. So it's not about how much exercise you want to do. So what you want to do is lower your caloric intake to about four to 500 if you want to lose weight. Right. But then you don't want to lose weight too fast because it starts to become skinny fat. Right. And then you don't want to sacrifice muscle tissue right. because your body is not uh, using carbs right. as a fuel source primarily. It's burning muscle tissue. Wow. You know, and fats and proteins. There's just a lot of things that people want to simplify this whole picture right. to really help you effectively not just lose weight, but become the strongest and best version of yourself. Therefore, raising your self-image, which raises your self-esteem, mm -hmm. which really allows you to become that goal achievement master that you want to be. That's phenomenal. And that's like the reverse effect, combining the four quadrants of well-being. That is phenomenal. So to answer his question, it's not about eating less. Like, real quick. Detoxing. A lot of people think detoxing is to burn fat. No, detoxing doesn't burn fat. Detoxing cleans out your waste system and your nutrient absorbent system so that you can absorb more nutrients with less calories. Good. And if you burn more calories, you will lose weight. Right. If you maintain around the same amount, you will maintain weight. If you eat more, you will gain weight. But if you don't have that food scale, if you're not writing down whatever you put inside your mouth, like a lot of times we have a salad, but when you put that oil on there, oils and fat skyrocket in calories. They are very calorie dense with low in nutrients. You know, or sometimes they can be nutrient dense, but they're high calorie dense, like nuts and stuff. And what we don't even know is what we think, well, I just had a salad and some nuts and stuff like that. Yeah, but you just had 700 calories when you put the dressing on. Right. And you've only burnt off three today. Wow. So good. So, so good, Clinton. Guys. And, and, and let me tell them this, though, because I, she made sure that if I try to give complete answers, because I really wanted to try to just shorten it. But so for anyone that thinks that, I, you know, long answers, but it's long. Right. It's not easy. Right. Um, two other things we was talking about. As long as we look for easy and light, we're not going to achieve not just our weight loss goals or big goals. Um, so we got to remove those from the equation um, if you really want to be a, a achieve your big goals. Absolutely. Okay, guys, as we close up now, I want to share with you guys, because at the end of the conversation I had with Clinton this week, I said, well, Clinton, I mean, he was just giving me just a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of information. I said, well, what is your degree in? Like, how many years of how many years of school did you go through, did you go through to get all this knowledge? And Clint, just go ahead and tell them what you told me because it blew my mind. Well, one, I got kicked out of school in the ninth grade, um, left home. Um, uh, I don't. I I created my own program. So um, in the beginning, I had nobody's uh, certification. Um, nobody's degree, nobody, no governmental agency saying that your knowledge is valid. I just, like how Steve Harvey say, act like success. I acted like, you know, um, my, my whole coaching system, my book. Uh, what I told her is, is three things that I don't like doing. Writing, um, landscaping, a job I did for nine years, having my own business and exercise <laughs> so like, what? but three things that you do <laughs> yeah but you know what a lot of people think that you have to require passion to do your purpose right. or like passion doing our passion and living our dreams is something that we're owed and they're often wondering why they're not getting it I, it's my belief we have to earn those things because when we earn them they can't be taken away no problem, but no, I, I don't, if you, like, you can look behind me, I mean, um, just a lot of, you know, a, a lot of books, I do a lot of, like, what you might say, a lot of uh, behavioral economics, a lot of cognitive psychology, right. um, the power of habit, compound effect, thinking fast, thinking slow, emotional, 
2.1. I'm very um, spiritually in tune. Right. So I do a lot of things. You might see uh, opening the spirit, seat of the soul, mind of the soul, Michael Beckwith, light visioning. Got some Lisa Nichols here. Um, just a lot of, you know, independent, a lot of audio programs. And I believe that a lot of people are wasting the resources that they have. Right. And that's a part of the relationship development um, and goal achievement. Of course, that runs through our seven principles is our resources to be able to get it out there. But no, I've, um, I've self-educated. Um, I don't want to say that I've wasted money because I guess I've learned a lesson, <laughs> you know, lesson, but no, but that's it. And um, time tested, um, a lot of mistakes. Right. Um, a lot of things, because I used to, some people that might remember training with me maybe three years ago, I used to tell people, look, you can eat whatever you want, as long as you burn it off. You know? Until I started getting, you know, 42, 43. <laughs> and I said, no, this is not, or I started training women, or I started training for weight loss. Right. Three years ago, when I actually started getting into weight loss, the principles don't align mm -hmm. with some of the other methodologies that I grew up using and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's it. A lot of learning and um, not even on my own accord. That's As me and you talked about before, and I don't want to try to get too, uh, you, know, I, you know, spiritual and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, like I told you, one day I just felt like, like God just tapped me on the forehead and just didn't pour anything in, but just opened me up. That's right. To get it in. That's awesome. That's when, I, when I heard your story, I was so blown by it. How, you know, drop being kicked out of school in the ninth grade and you just within just yourself, like when God did that touch, opened your mindset up. And that's why we love to teach about. Yeah. And another thing as a, as a non-believer, because it was like when my, vision was given to me this and the book is not just a it's not just a story of my life mm -hmm. it's one of my spiritual journey but it's actually there's a goal achievement manual inside the back it's a step-by-step -step thing and there's seven principles as i came up with the principles matter of fact the title i just want to say this the title the reverse effect i believe was god given to me because i could not think of a title to this book for about three months and one day i just sat down and i said you know what i need a title I need one answer because if you give me five or six, I'm going to think that it's my mind right. rushing around and it came reverse effect. But, um, and the principles, because when I started walking, doing the things that I'm doing, God says, you don't, I don't believe this. I, that's not me. I'm not that person. You don't have to believe it. Just start walking. And as you start walking, observe the evidence. And those principles now has me, man, I just, I put up a post today, man. I, bridges are being built for me, and I don't know anything about building bridges. You know, these tickets, the Steve Harvey thing, uh, the five, I didn't have enough votes um, because it was supposed to be by the most votes, you know, and, and here it is. So also I want to talk about my quickly. Yes, go ahead. My 30-day step-by-step meal guide. Also share with them, Clinton, how they can reach reach out to you. And Clinton's also in Jacksonville, Florida. Oh. All my people in Jacksonville, Florida. So if you're looking for that personal trainer, that coach, of course, you already see the wealth of knowledge that he has. Yeah. And I train people in uh, online, too, at the same time. Well, another thing that happened to me, when I first started out this uh, two years ago, this uh, – uh marketing myself and building my brand i was like man god i need this you know something that's gonna draw people to me and god was like use your name i was like oh hell no <laughs> ain't nobody gonna be able to that's too corny nobody's going to find me by that he says all right do it your way then but after i did it my way and learned my lesson you can find me at my name if you type my name clinton m mccoy in your google browser Amazon, Facebook, Instagram, Google Plus, Periscope, YouTube, you know, that's how you, you're going to just type my name in any of, anywhere. And that's just how it is. Clinton and McCoy, because I used to be ashamed. Not, not ashamed, but 
fear. Right. Because as as I start to say, like, my past, you know, because not only, of course, did I get kicked out of school in the ninth grade, and I left home at 15, and I was using cocaine at 15, mm-hmm. and other stuff, and drinking, and calling myself a gang member, and all type of stuff like that. I got everything that came along with that mm-hmm. for 14 years. Mm-hmm. So now to be in an industry where I have to have people to, they don't not so much trust me, but trust that I'm going to deliver to them what they came to get. Right. Um, because I'm still just a man. Um, you did certain things after I rebranded my image with new people coming to get to know me. I didn't want to, man, what if I put this out there and I lose people? Right. And that's one of my principles. One of, you got to have courage. God was like, where's your faith? Where's your courage? So, so I put that stuff out there, not lightly, but it takes courage to right. be able to show people, look, if I can do something, no degrees, no certifications, didn't start working until I was 33, you know. Then I went from six figures to Kentucky Fried Chicken. Wow, what a story. You know. That is phenomenal. All right. Everybody else. And that's it. All right, excellent families. So I'm sure everybody on here got something. So make sure you reach out to Clinton and just tell him thank you for just sharing, you know, his time, his wealth of knowledge here in this community. So that's all we have for you guys tonight. Um, and Clinton, just give us one more last statement, one last sentence, one last, um, just something that, you know, that just really wraps everything up that you taught them tonight. Things that you're going to be able to get, uh, the best method you're going to be able to use, whether it's goal achievement, whether it's relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, get the people around you need, whether it's fitness, it comes down to you've got to learn to understand who we are, what we want, and why we want it. Once we establish those things, It's going to get us who we are. And also we got to personal development is opening our mind to things that we are not used to because our comfort zone is a beautiful place, but nothing grows there. Wow. And that's it. If I had to say one thing, we have to look into ourselves and figure out our why for what we're doing. Um, and if we can't figure it out, that's what we need to be looking for. That is awesome. All right, that's you guys. It. Thank you so much for joining us. And until next time, bye-bye.